Greg, um, we talked a little before about this, but I wonder if you can allude to the relationship with uh, Brad Hughes, probably the hottest coach on the planet right now. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that arrangement? Yeah, so I went to Brad about two and a half years ago, and I was still two or three years ago, and I was struggling with my back, and uh, but I was, I was struggling with my game more than anything, and I was still trying to play, even though my back wasn't great, but... And I said, look, I, I, I don't have time to rebuild the arc. I, I have, you know, a shorter window here. I need something. Can you help me with my ball striking um, without me taking years to get that done? And he said, absolutely. I, you know, taking a look at what you're doing. He said, I think I can help you. Um, ball striking's improved. Been, been at it for a while now with him. Pretty simple stuff, but very effective. A um, lot of getting better, better use out of my, my feet and my groundwork. Um, and then better position without uh, with my hands and path through with the club through the ball so uh, it's led to better ball striking and uh, that's important for me if I can strike it even marginally better with my short game that's it's going to see some some good results so I'm I'm uh, I'm excited about the future would you say that your ball striking is as good as it's been for a long time or uh, all, all evidence yeah all, uh, yes for me like there was always a lot of room for improvement there and uh, he came to me in Dallas uh, at my home club and I think I shot two rounds I played together we sh I shot nine under with no bogeys and I was very pleased and excited I I was I said mate that's the best I've ever hit it now he's a great ball striker so for him he's like looks kind of normal to me so um, but it was for me. It was, it was really exciting. So it, taking that out, though, from a, a soft environment to a competitive environment of under pressure and some old habits creep in. So there's still a lot of work to do. But um, my good shots are certainly vastly improved from what I, I used to hit. Uh, but I still hit some squirrely ones every now and then. But uh, I'm, I, I like what I'm seeing so far. Greg, you're not the only of the sort of older guys, to put it unkindly, playing well at the moment. Can you put your finger on why yourself, Pamps, Lonard and Stevie Allen played well at the Aussie Open and, and are playing well? Is it, a, is it the lure of playing on the senior tour that keeps you guys at it? Or for yourself, obviously, a break is a bit different? Uh, yeah, for me, it's a break, but it's also the lure of that. But I, I'm also cognizant of um, I'm 46. I don't just want to tread water. You know, I actually like to see if I can play at a high level right now. Um, so I'm trying to prepare myself to do that rather than just waiting, waiting and killing four years for no reason. Um, because bad golf is bad golf. It doesn't matter if you get to, you're not going to magically play well just because you turn 50. So I need to play well. And so I'm more focused on that and trying to do it right now. Um, and, and look, I, I, I play with a lot of young kids like in the last little bit and I'm ex, I sort of, I get a fire in me about playing with these young guys and, and sort of trying to beat them. Um, played some practice rounds there at the Australian Open with some young guys, lovely, lovely guys. And um, but in my head, I was thinking, no, I really want to beat these guys, you know. So um, that's that's kind. Of, I still have a real competitive spirit and uh, and and very keen to to do well. And then obviously this week's the main focus right now. But then for next year, what what does your year look like playing wise? I've got yeah, I've got seven starts left on a medical, um, and so I'm hoping to start that in late January. Or ho that's my expectation right now. Start at the Bob Hope play my seven and then depending on when I finish those I'll, and how I play, I could get four or five more starts, you know, in the, you know, Reno, for example, or Barbasol, John Deere. So there's some events that will pop up along the way. So I could get, you know, 10 to 12 starts, um, which starting in January, you're looking at maybe two starts a month, which wouldn't be too bad for me after having 18 months off. And then depending on how I go, I've also, I'm exempt into the playoffs to get your card back on the Corn Ferry. So I got those three playoff events based on previous performance. So um, that's how my year frames out at the moment. Greg, um, uh, a lot of golfers on, on tours have back problems and I, I guess uh, Jason Day is one of them. Uh, early 30s type problems. How recurring uh, does can that be for Jason as a, as a problem? And do you think he's been a bit unfairly dealt with uh, just in, in maybe just perception that he, um, he, there was a reason not to come to Australia. Yeah, look, I, I think he was, from what I've heard, he was very keen to come. So, um, and knowing the flack that he's going to cop for not coming, I'm pretty sure it was legitimate back problems. I'd be nervous if I were him about how young he is and and having problems like that. I didn't have mine until I was in my late, mid 40s or early 40s. So that's a that's a bit of a worry. But I know. 
I used to work with Colin Swat and his coach, and I know how professional he is about um, having the right people around you and a team of people who all know what they're doing. And he certainly has access to unlimited, you know, financial options in terms of seeing the best doctors in the world. So um, I'm pretty sure they'll be able to figure it out. Um, get his back right. It's pretty important. But if you'd think of most guys who get to my age bracket, at some point there's a hip, back, shoulder, neck, knee, something that goes. It's just a lot of wear and tear on the body. So you can look after it if you can. Hence the picture of health that I am sitting here right now. Uh, when Elvis Smiley won his uh, Australian boys title on, on the coast, you sent out a nice tweet saying good on you, Elvis. Uh, was that particularly because you know Elvis or because it's great to see another lefty coming through and holding that? Yeah, back? two reasons. I had dinner with them here last year. With um, He works with Sean Lynch, who's a good friend of mine, um, and Trigsy. Uh, I've known Trigsy for a long time, so we had dinner downstairs here. Um, and he's a lefty and then uh, actually played nine holes with him in the Australian Open. He, he reached out through his caddy, Clates, and Clates sort of said, you want to play nine holes? And I said, yeah, sure. So it um, looked like he's, he reminded me as much as it offended me that he was 30 years younger than me, he reminded me of me, you know, like he was, he had a nice game um, and uh, a lot of room, a lot of potential there. So, and see how that unfolds. I look forward to watching. Uh, how healthy is left-handed golf in Australia? Well, that's a great question. Um, I don't know if you spoke, I mean, there's me, Richard Green, Nick Ahern are the old guys, and then you got Elvis, the young guy. Uh, I saw Gareth, is it uh, Patterson, Gareth Patterson out there, New Zealander. Um, I haven't watched, I know there's a really good young player on the European tour, but obviously he's not Australian, but I haven't, I haven't watched a lot, to be honest, in the last 12 months of how guys have been doing. I kind of poke my nose in when some of my buddies are doing well, but I'm not the right guy to ask how healthy left-handed golf is. My back feels all right. How about that? That'll do. Speaking of which, Greg, I just wanted to ask about your back, and it seemed like it was pretty seamless uh, in, in Sydney, but... Was there a moment where you kind of realised, yep, I fixed it like on the course? or uh, Probably after that? the first day's practice because it, it typically, historically, I couldn't practice putting for longer than uh, about 10 minutes. Um, and if I did, I wouldn't be able to play the next day. And then I arrived Sunday, I practised Monday putting. And I'd been through it at home a little bit, but I just want to see. I practised for about an hour putting and hit balls and did what I needed to do to be competitive and prepare properly. Uh, woke up Tuesday morning and felt fine. And I've got these exercises I do. I went through all of that, went to the course, and off we go. So um, that was probably a great moment. That was a victory already. Like I was really buoyed by the idea that this this week was a win regardless, even before I even teed off, because I was pain-free when I teed up Thursday after preparing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And given what, what could have happened, like the flip side was that that was it. So emotionally that must have been pretty pretty massive to sort of it, it was it was exciting I, you know I'd be dis I would have been disappointed because the writing was on the wall at home that things were going in the right direction um, but yeah it was uh, it was pretty cool because if it doesn't work out it's uh, seek employment elsewhere so um, I'm excited about still playing the game for a living particularly after 18 months off that's I think that came at the right time for me and uh, so um, I was you know I think every guy wishes he could just jump out of his middle of his career sometimes at that sort of well the end of his career and just have a couple of years off I think there's some guys after being on the road for 22 years who'd like to do that and I was forced to do that but it was very good just sort of further to that a little bit Greg standing on the 10th tee or first whichever way you teed off at four over what was your mindset how were you feeling about how you were hitting the ball and how did it did something click yeah so uh, yeah so I, I think I doubled nine to go Four over or bogey, anyway, bogey nine to go four over after hitting in the water. Um, I did it, I just, I had two par fives coming up that I could reach and I thought, you know, let's just try and play this back nine in under par. Um, I hold a 30 footer for birdie on 10 and and straight away, just like that, some of the old feelings of a momentum and, and you know, got every round of golf has an energy to it sometimes and the energy of the round has changed in my head. No one else is just mine. Oh, I've still got these two par fives coming up and I've got I've just done this. So um, good things started to happen. I played a lot better. I hit better shots and uh, got things flowing in the right direction. Picked up the birdies I needed to and shot, ended up shooting even par. When you left here 12 months ago, did you go back to Dallas? So yes. What was that plane ride like? You've missed, I guess, the cut. Did you know you were medically on the right track at that mm -hmm. point and where were you? Where was your head at? No, you know? I didn't. I was still undiagnosed. I had a torn ligament I didn't know about in my spine. Um, doctor, 
not missed it, but just didn't, didn't, well, I guess I just didn't see it. And then I changed doctors and he found it. Um, and that explained a lot. So I had that fixed with uh, PRP, blood spinning, they do. Uh, three injections of that, which hurts. <laughs> and then, uh, um, and then I, arthritis is just anti-inflammatory stuff that I got to take daily. But when you left here, what mindset were you in? Got to find the answer, you know. And it slash started to kind of look at other options. If it was kind of one foot in, one foot out, you know, I got to find the answer. But there was a point, not in January, but certainly by come around June, July, I started to sort of think, well, if I can't get this fixed, I need to, um, I need to seek another job. So I started to ask questions around town about what to do, you know, in golf and coaching and things. So I, but then I got it fixed. So I started practicing hard. How many questions of how many people did you ask and? I, I went to two different people that I know in town, at, at golf coaches, and asked them if they uh, needed someone to come work and help. I, I, I'm passionate about kids and short game, like pre with the, working with kids. I've done a little bit of mentoring with some young kids, some high school kids. Really enjoy that. Um, and just working with people in their short game. I'm not a long game coach. I don't really understand my own swing half the time, let alone yours. So, um, But I can help you with chipping and putting, I think. Um, I've got an understanding and a passion for that. So I was keen on doing something like that. Um, Greg, you're wearing uh, your, your Luke the Duck cap and uh, the badge for, for Jared. Were you impressed that uh, some of the Americans wore the uh, Luke the Duck badges at the President's Cup last week? And is it great to think that the Yellow Day is going to be uh, bigger again this year? Yeah, very. I think it's going to be a huge day. I'm, uh, I'm actually, I've, my, the yellow shirt I got last year doesn't fit me anymore because I put on a little weight. But uh, so I'm going to have to run over to the pro shop and probably buy a yellow shirt. But uh, I got the hat, and uh, I think what Ricky Fowler has done has been phenomenal. He's worn that that pin for quite a while now, a couple of years, I believe. Um, so I, th I think that is a testament to the kind of person that he is because he's not being told to do it; he's just doing it of his own own volition. So. Um, and look, hopefully, uh, you know, Brioni and uh, and I believe it's Jack Wilson's going to shave their head and raise a bunch of money if they get up to 20 grand. So I think we can smash that out of the park and, and do something for a great cause and, uh, you know, in the memory of a great man. Greg, I wonder if you'd just talk about the golf course a little bit. When you won here, it was half and half. You've played a few times since. You've played nine holes this week thus far. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the maturing nature of the golf course. I, I've really enjoyed what, I, what I've seen over the last couple of years. I think our, our, our tour is getting a, a good handle on how to set it up. I think with the speed of the greens is not too fast, so we can still chip, because some of the chips are really tricky, and we can still chip onto the green and it'll prop up and stop for us. Um, gets windy here, so the balls will be, with the severity of some of the greens, there would be a lot of problems, I think, if they ran around 12, so keep them around 10, I think, on the stem, and uh, uh, really sets up it's getting better and better every year. Uh, so I've been really pleased and uh, uh, the course is kind of settled and a little firmer fairways this week because you got no rain up here. So that suits me too. I'm happy with that. Now I can keep up with a few guys. So, um, yeah, I think I think it's, it's really nice. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good week.